Hello everyone. Greetings and salutations. How's everybody doing? You know, I'm hoping to... I was hoping, and I still am, I guess, hoping to be able to talk about everything that I want to talk about as far as Guillermo Rigondiao and Vasily Lomachenko, but, you know, life's kind of busy, as you can see. And I'm involved in, well, a whole bunch of stuff. So I basically don't necessarily have the time to be able to do everything that I want to do as far as YouTube's concerned. But that's just what that is, okay? However, what I will be able to do, what I'm gonna do right now is talk about the trilogy of Vasily Lomachenko and... Albert Selimo, Selimov, 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 I hope I'm saying that correctly, anyway, well, fuck it, let's just jump into it and it's all gonna make sense why I chose to do this, so this is the AIBA World Boxing Championship in 2007, as you can tell, so, well, about 10 years ago, in Chi-Town, big Ukrainian population and they're at this fight <laughs> hoping their man 19 year old Vasily Lomachenko could bring home the gold um, my brother went to this university UIC Chicago I lived in Chicago at the time but did not even know about this fight happening or I would have been there oh well not a big amateur boxing fan anyway. But I want to talk about this trilogy because, you know, it's a great story for many reasons. And maybe maybe there is a documentary about these two guys. There should be, in my opinion. And, you know, if only like a 30-minute little documentary or whatever because... It's just rich, but but let's just watch. And and also, I want to talk about Vasily Lomachenko's progression as a fighter, right? So, Vasily is the guy in blue. The guy in red is the Russian, Selimov. And right away, you notice, obviously, that they're both southpaws, which is relevant. And, and another reason why I'm talking about it is it's because it's relevant to this upcoming fight. And Selimov, even though, in my opinion, he's naturally right-handed, turned around southpaw, you know, he's similar to Rigondiao in some respects that we'll discuss, most notably maybe right now his stance. But unlike Rigondiao, he has a very active right hand, which is why I think he's a turned around southpaw. And he relies a lot on his right hand, so it's something to keep in mind as far as comparison. But let's just watch. You see Lomachenko doing his best impression of who? Mike Tyson, right? One of his idols. Right? So, what Lomachenko is trying to do is just get inside, at least for now, right? And mid-range, and set off bombs. Fight inside. Right? He landed a little left hand there. Right? Uh, maybe it was... You know, I don't like amateur boxing because it's just so subjective when it comes to these judges. And I understand the punch has to land on the front of the face, right? But then you watch some of Rigondiao's fights and they're giving him credit for slaps. And anyway, he doesn't get credit there. But, you know, he's using his jab a little bit on the way in, which is smart. But it's really mostly about just this very exaggerated head and upper body movement with this with this peekaboo defense, right? Mike Tyson. You see, he gets touched there. And and they give the Russian a point. You see, check it out. This is this is what I don't understand. Look, he's not he's slapping him. You could see the thumb. Kinda, I guess. You see the thumb. So he, he's, I don't know, he's not landing on the face, right? The white part of the glove's not landing, it's, it's a slap. 
kind of hitting him with the thumb. But look at dude's arms. And that's another comparison to Urion Diao. This dude's got some fucking gorilla arms, man. Anyway, let's continue. Did you see that? Holy crap. I'm going to slow it down because I really want you to see how long these dude's arms are. And, and, and some of it is probably the camera lens and whatnot, but my god. Look at these gorilla arms, man. Right, he's throwing a crooked shot and he's touching Lomachenko. Lomachenko is extended and he could barely touch him, right? Look at these gorilla arms. But anyway... Too slow. So, you see lots of foot movement, you know, bending his legs and just trying to get inside. It's very exaggerated. Do you see how Lomachenko tripped a little bit there? Uh, you see? He's he's 19 years old, man, right? He's, he's still not the Lomachenko that we know today, obviously. Right? But the defense is solid. He fights on the inside, right? Boom, boom. And that's another thing that I don't like about amateur boxing. Like You don't get credit for body shots? Okay. But I'm looking at this as a professional fight as much as possible. And another another thing about Lomachenko, his feet are really wide apart, right? So when he gets like this, right, right there, look how he has to kind of stumble and readjust and, and pull his feet back together a little bit to be able to keep moving forward, right? His feet are too wide. Very exaggerated head movement. Catches a jab on the way in. I guess they both hit each other, so nobody nobody got points for anything. But you see Lomachenko fighting at every distance, right? Long range. Mid-range, inside. This is... In my opinion, you know, this is a fighter who obviously has technique, is learning technique, but athleticism just dominates who he is as, as a boxer at this point in his career because that's, that's the most natural thing, right? Just got cracked there with a nice punch on the way in. He's first and foremost an athlete, right? Look at that punch. Boom, right? If, if I'm looking at this as a professional fight, Lomachenko is dominating, right? He's landing the better punches. Not to say that the Russian isn't landing good shots, because he is. But he's bullying him and landing the better punches. Not much being landed by either guy, but it is what it is, right? Like that punch right there, right? That's not a legal blow. Neither in, it's not a scoring blow. It's neither in amateur or pro boxing. I, if there's one thing that we could learn from watching amateur boxing, and, and this isn't perfect because they don't always get it right, is to be able to discern and learn what a legal punch is, what a scoring blow is, and what a scoring blow is not, right? See that little move he's trying to pull off? Going, going to your um, left against the southpaw is is very awkward right like you have to st basically switch stances if only for a moment but Selim Selimov sees it and, and gets out of there Selimov is, is boxing trying to maintain distance obviously he's got the look at those arms man jeez I don't know if it's easy to see for you guys but man this dude's got some long ass arms and he also keeps his glove open when he, when he throws a lot of these punches which uh, makes him look longer you see that this guy's got crazy crazy long arms right but as you saw with that left hand 
that's one of the drawbacks of having long arms is it's not as easy for you to throw very straight punches down the middle and if you close the distance like Lomachenko just did it's gonna be hard for you to hit him with the left hand right and gets rocked back Bam, best, if this is a professional round, right? And look, I understand the differences and it's not fair necessarily, but we're talking about professional boxing. And if that's professional boxing, Lomachenko won that round, right? I thought you could have made a case for him winning, period, even uh, according to the amateur rules, but boxing is just so corrupt, all the way down from the amateurs to the pros. But I'm not trying to take credit away from Albert. He's he's doing a great job. He's a little bit more experienced fighter. And, you know, it is what it is. But see, Lomachenko, how exaggerated all his moves are. And he just relies on athleticism so much, right? Opens himself up and gets cracked. Selimov kind of controlled him a little bit or tried to with the jab. Measured him with the jab and boom. Lomachenko saw that left hand, right? He moved away from it, but he got cracked. Scoring blow. I don't know if there's much more to take from this fight, so... Not to make it too long, we're going to fast forward a little bit. But Lomachenko basically does the same thing all fight. He just comes right at his opponent and he just wants to bulldoze him down, right? And he comes back a little bit in the middle of the fight. But ultimately gets outboxed, at least according to the judges. Here he lands a left or right. Well, no, the left, right? He's all, he, you know, his feet are like all over the place, kind of. He switches stances, and I'm not saying it's not deliberate because it clearly is, but it's just kind of the result of him just, just running after his opponent, right? He just ends up in, in a certain stance. So I can't really call it technique. He's just, he's just a very natural, spontaneous, um, athletic fighter right it's all it's almost i don't want to say a hundred percent but like man maybe 80 percent right whatever the fuck that means it's just pure athleticism right hyperbole but you you get the point right so he just switched stances right and he's no my bad It's just awkward, right? It doesn't look very deliberate. He's just he's just moving his feet, moving his hands, and if he southpaw, he's he he starts out as southpaw. But if he, in the midst of you know just being extremely athletic, he happens to switch stances, well, he will throw punches, you know, no matter what. So, you know, very active, just come forward, forward, lots of head and upper body movement. Pure athlete, man. Just athlete, athlete, athlete. Close fight through two rounds. But, you know, if you if you watch this fight and you kind of slow down the action and count the punches, it is not clear that Lomachenko lost this fight, right? But, hey, officially he did. Right? But, it, but it's not easy for Selimov to hit him, right? He's trying to measure him. He's trying to control him. He's not really catching them much on the way in. It's, you know, it's very difficult to hit him. Just like it was very difficult to hit Mike Tyson. And he will, and Lomachenko, just like Mike Tyson, is able to, to close the distance, right? A lot. Now, in the amateurs, for some odd reason, you hardly ever get credit for inside fighting. Uh, but you see the beginnings of, of a pro style, right? Even though, yeah, he's very amateurish because of how high energy he is and you know like what um i think it was michael conlin doing an interview with boxing truth put it perfectly right amateur fights are a sprint and 
professional boxing is, is a marathon. I'm not sure if he put it exactly like that, but something along those lines, right? But you could see that Selimov is very... There he seems to get him with the counter left on the way in, right? But did he? Lomachenko opens himself up, right? His left his left hand is, is protecting him, right? But because he's throwing the right, he opens himself up. He actually lands the better punch, right? He rocks him back and doesn't really seem to get hit. Check out the scoreboard. Nobody gets credit? Hmm. Anyway, you can watch that fight on your own. Um, see what you think. But, you know, it's the same thing from Lomachenko. And one thing I noticed in this fight is that he just landed two punches and got credit. I don't know how that works, man. Boom, right? Nice right hand. Slips the counter. Boom. Hits him again, right? gets credit for one but that's the amateurs for you anyway you know Lomachenko and I've always said this I don't understand why people call him a, a boxer in style right he was f f being a fighter which is exactly what you see here that was always his natural inclination that's that's just how he started out it's his base style Vasily Lomachenko is a fighter first and foremost a fighter boom right look at that he gets inside right doesn't get hit with the left hand none of, none of that counts right they didn't give him credit for any of that You know what I mean? They weren't perfect shots, but damn it. Really? <laughs> What's going on here? Right? He jumps in, but he kind of dropped his hand a little bit there, but his chin is tucked. Defense is decent. It's pretty good. You know, he did get hit, but not a very powerful, not a very clean blow. So, again, you know, this is the young Lomachenko before technique started to, to play a bigger role in his, uh, in his boxing approach. And he's just a pure fighter, right? I'm not saying that he didn't have other fights where he performed differently, but, you know... This is a championship fight, world championship fight, so you have to expect that Lomachenko brought his best suit to the table, right? To the dance, right? Why would he do something that he's not as good at, that, that he's not, that's not very natural for him? Anyway, look at that, Mike Tyson, right? <laughs> I mean, I know I'm skipping through this and, and you're not seeing everything, but he's kicking the guy's ass, right? Yeah, he's getting hit here and there, but he's bullying him. He's pushing him back. The guy's holding. You know, he's getting hit. Boom. No, no score, right? Whatever. I'm not saying they should score it because it is the amateurs, but in the pros, you get credit for something like that. Right? Anyway, I'm not convinced that he lost this fight, but maybe he didn't win it either, you know what I mean? It, it was a very close fight. Um, but, you know, he breaks down and, and just cries because... The crowd is booing. 
Look at how these guys are interacting. I, I don't know, man. There, there's a rich story there, in my opinion. I think they know each other, and they know each other well. And they got to know each other as... Selimov is the only man to, to ever beat uh, Lomachenko credibly, right? Even though... Yeah, I'm not sure how credible it was, right? He got the he got the decision. So let's watch the second fight, and this one is um, the first round of Olympic Games. Where was this? Um, was this in China? Yeah, this was in Beijing, I believe. And they have they. As luck would have it, they drew each other in the first round of the Beijing Olympics, and they're going to rematch. So they're both a few years older now. And let's see how Lomachenko approaches the rematch. Right? Lots of sportsmanship. Um, I'm, I'm sure they all know each other very well. Come on, let's go. So now Lomachenko is moving around, right? Feigning, he's running, but he's he's not jumping Selimo, right? So he's doing something different now. And he's more on his toes than before, and now he looks like, like an amateur boxer, even though he's not boxing. He's not jabbing, he's not leading and and avoiding the counters, right? He's just... He's using a different approach to, to get the feel for his opponent, right? But ultimately, what he wants to do is close the distance, right? Get inside. And, you know, he still has the head movement. He still has, you know, the upper body movement. But it, it's just not as exaggerated anymore, right? It's more, it's more refined and, I don't know, maybe more professional, if you will. It's... It's more sophisticated. He's wasting less energy. But still doing the same thing, right? Avoiding, looking to avoid the punches and get inside, right? It's not quite as pronounced as before. But now he's back to the old Lomachenko we saw, right? Trying to close the distance. Moving his head, looking to close the distance, right? But, but... You know, in the in the previous fight, when he was doing this, bending at the waist, he was getting way out of position. You see how he just bent just a little bit. He could have potentially come back with the punch on on his way up there, right? See how he's moving his head? It's just not as exaggerated. He's more, he's trying to stay in position to punch more so than before. The movement is not as erratic, it's not as hectic, it's it's a lot more calculated. And, you know, he moves, he dips, and then he straightens out. He dips, and then he straightens out. It's, he's using his, his um, upper body movement a lot better to be more in position to punch and, and to set up his punches a little better. Before he would, he was like a... A bit like a jack in a box, maybe just just very erratic and to th moving to this side and that side and in and out and this it's just a lot more refined now, right? Even though it's it's essentially the same thing, it's just more refined. You see, gets cracked, looks like by a right hand. That's not a scoring blow because it, you didn't turn it over, right? In, in the pros, you get credit for stuff like that. But in the amateurs, you know, it, it depends, I guess. Now, now you see Lomachenko landing punches on the inside, but they're not very clean, so nobody gets credit. Boom. And this is, this is a mistake that Lomachenko makes right now. You see that, how he went... He basically walks into the left hand from Selimov. 
and just gets cracked, right? He's not protecting himself and he catches a counter on the way in, a left hand counter. Now, Selimov is predominantly a right handed fighter, even though he fights out of the southpaw stance, he uses his right hand a lot more. So, Lomachenko, knowing this, I suppose, wasn't as worried about the left hand as the right hand, and you know. You should be aware of both punches, but I presume that's why he's walking into the left hand. He doesn't respect the left hand of Selimov as much. But now, you know, he got cracked and he's doing a better job of keeping his hands up. But, you know, he'll ambush him and then he'll step out, run, run around a little bit. He's a lot more upright, right? More in his in his boxing stance. Did he lose this round? I think he, yeah. He's more in position to punch, um, and he gave away the the first round. But you you see a much more calculated approach. Someone who is no longer exactly the same as he was in the first fight. There he goes. He just walks right into it, right? Boom, gets cracked with a nice clean counter. Walk right into it. Big mistake. Not something you don't want to be doing against Guillermo Rigondeau, right? Round two. You see you see how this movement is it's not as exaggerated anymore, and even when he dips like that he's always in position to punch, right? Whereas before, he would get a little bit off balance, his feet weren't as synced up with his upper body movement, and there were just less punching opportunities for him, right? He's more refined of a fighter now. Still a fighter, though. Not a boxer, not a counter-puncher, not a puncher, a fighter. Bam. Why didn't he get credit for that? Man, I... You can't stand amateur boxing, man. I mean, it's it's interesting to look at it, and it helps fighters come up and make a name of themselves, you know. But, like, why wouldn't you score that punch, right? Anyway. But, you see, Selimov, he just cracked him again. Did he get credit for that? Look at that. Boom, just hit him with the jab no credit but you see how he closed the distance with the jab and now dipped away from the left hand counter right and the left hand sailed right past him he got cracked with it previously and he adjusted now now he's coming in behind a jab and dipping away from the left hand which is looping like Rigondeaux not it's it's more looping than Rigondeaux but it is what it is Looks like maybe Selimov laid it, landed something too, I don't know. You see how active Selimov has to be to keep him off, right? He has to throw so many punches. And, and Lomachenko blocks everything. I'm not saying he doesn't get hit with partial blows, but none of that counts as far as amateurs go. But you see Selimov is similar in... I'm not saying he's as sharp as Rigondeau, but he's very similar to him, right? My God, like, are they going to start counting Lomachenko's punches? Look at that. Boom, right? Just cracked him with the jab on the way in and leaned away from the left hand. See how he's leaning away from the left hand? Now, obviously, he's leaning into the right hand, which is good when it comes to Selimov, but he's also protecting himself, right? And then he rolls that punch also because he sees it coming. And some awkward tie-up action. Wait, how did the Russian score, not Lomachenko? Anyway, maybe I'm missing something. Boom! There he goes. He makes the same mistake again. Right? Drops his lead hand. Throws the jab. and gets cracked with the counter. 
Boom. Whoa. The chin's not tucked in. He got backed up a little bit. Stepped in with the jab. But he didn't really land the jab and got countered. Left himself wide open for a counter left hand. Which... But look how short that left hand is, right? There's very little wind up and it's it's very short. And in some ways it's better than Rigon Diao's. Now Rigon Diao's left hand would be faster, right? But he would cock it back. So the hand speed would be faster, but the punch wouldn't necessarily get there faster. But still, it Lomachenko makes a big mistake here and gets cracked with the counter left hand, right? Um, and if he does that against Rigon Diao, he's going to get busted up. And, you know, Lomachenko still has a lot of that upper body movement left, even though it's refined. And you see it here, right? I mean, he's leaning. Whichever way he leans, he's potentially leaning into, into a punch, right? So if he's going to be doing that, he needs to keep his hands up. And, you know, that's just what he does, isn't it? He leans this way, that way, as a means of feigning you basically out of position and getting inside. But when he does that, he tends to protect himself. Did he get cracked with the left hand again? Maybe a bit of an uppercut? I'm not sure. Or a bolo punch, rather. Almost walks into a left hand, right? Still, primarily an athletic fighter, um, better technique, he, you know, you see the progression, but he's still making mistakes and exposing himself to the left hand, just like right there, right? But, he's able to land his own punches. I really like Lomachenko's jab on the way in, it's very Mike Tyson-esque, right? This upper body movement and then just straight jab, bam! Which, and then he goes straight into defense, right? Boom. And protects himself because he knows the left hand is coming back. Right? So even though he's naturally falling into, into the left hand because, you know, he's, he went to his right to land the jab. He's expecting the left hand counter now and for the most part is defensively responsible. Whether or not he's fast enough, well... Man, he's beating the crap out of him on the inside. Is he getting credit for any of this stuff? Yeah, he did. Right, but... One thing to consider here is that... Look at that. He should get credit for that too, right? He, he has a taller guy with much longer arms. And he's taking advantage of him by getting inside, right? Guys that have these long arms, you know, so much is said about reach advantage. And, you know, reach advantage is, it's an advantage when it is. And when it isn't, it's a disadvantage. Once you get inside, longer arms are actually a disadvantage, right? I guess he was hitting on the brake. Not really, but. See, this, Lomachenko likes to pull this move a lot against southpaws, right? It's it's very awkward for a southpaw to go to his left against another southpaw and pivot, right? So he basically has to switch stances or kind of square himself up even. It doesn't get him there, but, you know, it's something that, that he works on and, and something that could could be useful against uh, Rigon Diao. At the very least, he won't be getting hit on the way in, right? Boom. Right, he's able to close the distance on the guy that has longer arms. And look at all these short shots he's able to land on the inside, right? Boom. Doesn't get credit, but hey. 
cracked him again a couple times. He's winning the inside battle. So, and the difference from the first fight is you see Lomachenko a lot more. He's not getting out of position nearly as much, right? He's using his knees more to to bend. He's not, the movement isn't as exaggerated. And, you know, when he's inside, he's able to get inside and, and work his short game. And he completely outscores him in the second round and comes back, right? This is something he likes to do against southpaws too. Jump in with the jab, right? Sometimes he exposes himself, but he, he's learning. He just jumps in with the jab. And look, his left hand is right by his chin, which is what makes him one of the reasons why he's a better technical fighter than Guillermo Rigondeau, right? Look how he's protecting his chin. And then he comes back, put pulls his... Um, I'm not sure if he gets it back in time, but... Oh, no, it was an uppercut. He got cracked with an uppercut on the way in. But, you know, his hands are up, the chin is tucked, and he's a lot more defensively responsible. Obviously, if you're going to be super aggressive, you're going to get cracked. But it's difficult to land cleanly on him. I don't know if that punch scored or not. Because the chin is tucked, the hands are up, and you see? See how he protects himself? I don't know if that punch got there cleanly or not. He's a lot more defensively responsible, even though he's... You see that? He just keeps doing that same thing with the jab, right? It worked for him in the in the first fight, if you remember. That was one of... That was his, probably his best punch, right? And then he immediately tucks up and pulls his hand back, right? So, obviously, anytime you throw a punch, you're going to open yourself up. But, um... And this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about, Right? He bends out of the way, but he doesn't get himself out of position. So he's able to pop back up and throw punches. The pivots are working. You know, he went to the left. Granted, this was on the inside now. He wasn't closing the distance anymore. But he went to the left, right? Turned, shifted stances. He's, he's a right-handed fighter essentially now, or in an orthodox stance. And boom, landed a little punch on the inside. Round three, he so Lomachenko built up a lead, and now he's going to kind of ride his lead a little bit, right? He's going to do what a lot of amateurs do, and that is run. Frustrate his opponent. Stay away from him. Don't let him score. Make his opponent, you know, maybe lunge and... and overcommit to something but eventually he's gonna look to close the distance anyway so what he's doing now is ambush fighting this is no longer Mike it, it's still Mike Tyson-esque right there right but it's also a lot like what Pacquiao does and again look at the upper body movement it's not as it's not as exaggerated anymore right it's a lot tighter it's just as effective boom boom left right right how do you hit this guy difficult right and then he goes to his right and then uses that to set a punch up boom right in the first fight he was bending so far out of position he couldn't come back with punches but now he is right and now he's gonna run and kinda he's not boxing he's he's ambush fighting he wants to ride his lead a little bit, frustrate his guy, and maybe counter-fight, respond to what his opponent is doing. But it, he's not just counter-punching, he's counter-punching and leading, right? Counter-punching and leading, leading and counter-punching. He's fighting. I don't know what's happening here. Looks like he got his nose cracked or something. Or the skin on his nose cracked, so he's bleeding. See how, see how Selimov is getting frustrated now? So, so you're starting to see versatility, and you know, that's that's because Lomachenko worked up a lead, and and he's protecting the lead a little bit, but also because he didn't just 
go right after him from from the very beginning he he took his time a little bit and he was a lot more composed and reserved <laughs> look at these guys man they're they're frenemies in my opinion there's 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 something really rich going on there so selimov basically selimov tells him uh, you know fight me fight me so he does his little roy jones thing right come come on come on <laughs> that he's been doing in the in the pros too but he's not getting caught. And look at the everything off the jab, right? But he's leading and look in the counter. He's not boxing. He wants to he wants to pursue him, right? He's boom. Lands a jab and wants to count it, right? Wants to wants to keep on fighting. But Selimov gets out of there. And again, notice how his upper body and head movement isn't as exaggerated, right? He dips. But he dips to come up with the punch. Now the punch is in there. So he dips again, looking to come up with the punch. But it's not as exaggerated anymore. It's a lot more reserved and more technically sound. He has better technique now. And Selimov is getting very frustrated, as you can see. Now Lomachenko, you know, he's ambush fighting. He's doing different things. He's not just coming forward. Fighting, right? It's a pure fighter. Not a boxer. Pure fighter. And here's another instance of, you know, where shorter arms are better. It's better to have shorter arms. Right? Get close, mid-range, and you could get off your punches. Boom. Seems to win that, right? You see how Selimov's punches, especially in the last part of that, I'm going to slow it down so that you see what's going on. Selimov's punches are on the outside of Lomachenko's punches, and Lomachenko's punches are on the inside, right? It's a lot tighter. You see that? He's a lot tighter, and he's better. And if he gets Rigondiao in such a position, you have to expect that to be the case, too. Right? He has a more sophisticated game plan now. He's not just coming forward, he's running also. Which, you know, in the amateurs, it's just what you do. It's very much ex expected. Look at that. Look how frustrated Selimov is. See that? <laughs> oh man, I want to see that documentary. And if there is one that I don't know of, you guys let me know. See that? how it's no longer very exaggerated the movement you see the defense right hands are up and then uses that little small dip to land that jab and then look how look how tucked his chin is even if there's a left hand counter coming back and it's not looping like in this case it's going to be hard to hit him very cleanly and you definitely can't hit the hit the chin right and then he gets inside of the, anything that might be looping like that left hand and smothers and keeps working if this guy gets inside on Andre Gondiao, expect low blows, headbutts, holding, bending below the waist, all, all this illegal shit from Rigondiao. He's not Rigondiao is not going to be able to to deal with Lomachenko on the inside. He just won't. See how inside of with his short arms, man. It's the reach is is only an advantage when the round starts right and if you're able to maintain distance you're able to maintain the reach advantage but if you can't it becomes a disadvantage unless you're Paul Williams and you could fight inside with these long ass arms right so he's gonna run away from the guy and just ride the lead basically but he's not boxing He's, this isn't boxing as far as styles are concerned. He's still, he, it's ambush fighting. I'm not saying that there aren't moments where he does box a little bit, but this isn't boxing. He's just straight up running. Boring. 
but you know this this isn't the pros you're not there to rock the crowd you're there to represent your country and and make your country proud right that's that's why you're there you're there to win by any means necessary within the legal framework now you know he got Selimo frustrated and he got Selimo fighting guy with the longer arms now he's trying to box a little bit and, and doing well but he got this guy to fight him which is what he wanted right look at that so look at that look at that ah <laughs> I love it so Lomachenko gets his revenge and clearly beats the guy that dubiously beat him and handed him his only loss right this is I don't know gave him a bloody nose and went on to win the gold medal in these Olympics right so now let's look at their third fight in the World Series of Boxing a few more years later down the line and let me talk about WSB for a moment here because you hear some criticism of Lomachenko that I'm gonna try to say his name correctly it's not Lomachenko it's not Lomo it's not Lomachenko <laughs> from what I heard it's Lomachenka anyway Vasily Lomachenka as far as the WSB goes um, a lot of people want to take credit away from him for winning, you know, two titles and seven fights or his first title and his third fight and beating all these records. They they want to start counting these fights, right? But he wasn't fighting professional fighters here. He was fighting top-level amateur fighters, right? None of these guys have ever had any professional bouts. Now, if you want to make the distinction that professional fighting is when you get paid, I mean, amateurs get paid. <laughs> isn't Wasn't the Cuban system notorious for giving cars and houses to their top-level amateurs, right? Amateurs get paid, too. Don't get it twisted. Maybe it's under the table, but they get paid, too. So just because you get paid, even though technically that is professional boxing, um, that's not the distinction we're making here. We're talking about professional boxing uh, or boxing matches that are sanctioned by sanctioning bodies where ratings are at stake where they look at you and they consider you um, you know all, all box rec and, and ring magazine and all these other rating bodies they get involved and they judge your fights they they rank you based on your performances you're eligible to become a contender within any sanctioning body right you're eligible to be put on the pound for pound list and all that other stuff so no these aren't professional fights he's not fighting within the system that everybody else else was fighting within when they were winning their first title in you know three or four or seven or whatever however many fights it was but if you want to start counting this then you got to start giving Lomachenko credit right so so if you want to criticize him and and start counting these fights then you can't say that he only has seven fights right because that's what a lot of these haters do is they criticize him saying that he didn't win when it's convenient right they say oh no he didn't win his first title in in his third fight because he had the, these fights right but then when they want to hate on him they say oh he only has seven or eight fights or whatever he has one loss in however many fights right so look, if you're gonna count this, you gotta be you gotta be honest, and you gotta consider these fights and look at the level of opposition he beat. Right, he went six and zero in World Series of Boxing against Olympians, world class amateurs from all over the world. Former world champion, right here, right, the only guy to ever beat him. He he got his trilogy um, against Albert. Sell him off. So, you know, people are just biased as fuck, man. For every, basically, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, right? Just like, just like with talking about Guillermo Rigondeau's opponent's size and ignoring the fact that they're drained. You know what I mean? There's, there's two sides to every story. If we're going to count these fights, then we got to give them credit for beating top level amateurs, right? When, when, Andre Ward beat Barrera and Brand. What, what was the number one thing used up to hype up both those guys? 
Barrera being a credible fighter, Brand not. What was the number one argument, right? They're Olympians. They're Olymp. All these guys here are Olympians, and he beat them all. So anyway, let's continue. So, look at Lomachenko now. A few more years later down the line, look at how even less exaggerated the movements are, right? Even less. So he kind of a little bit gets out of position, but not really because he could, the punching opportunity, like right there, he could punch from that too, right? But he, he's a lot calmer and the movements are a lot, they're not exaggerated anymore, right? But it has to be said, he has a, he has a habit of leaning to his right. And leaning into a, the southpaw's left hand, right? He does it. Look at him, right? Bam, right there. But he's setting up, he's trying to set up the right hand. So so he has to go to the right a little bit, right? But it has to be said that if he dips in that direction, then he's dipping into the left hand. And obviously he knows that because he keeps his hands up, right? Oh, and there's another thing I forgot to mention in his earlier fights the first couple of fights we just saw here he wasn't probing very much was he less so in the first fight maybe a little bit in the second um and you're gonna see a lot more probing with the lead hand in this fight right so every subsequent fight he had with selimov um he did a little bit better right he you you could see the improvements in in lomachenko Right, a lot of feigning, foot feints, head feints. Boom! Look at that. It's a lot smoother now, right? He's he's coming into his physical prime, and his feet and his hands are in better accord than before, right? Now he's able to dip, block the right hand from Selimov, throws a punch inside of that, right? Gets a little bit closer, sets off a very short left hand, doesn't land. Puts his hands back up, right? And sets off one more, couple more punches. Always in position to punch while, while coming forward. With very, very responsible defense, right? A lot more calculated. Not as gung-ho. Slowly becoming a more professional fighter, right? But still using a lot of movement to, to set up his attacks to get foot position on his opponent, to, to get him out of position, to get his opponent out of position, right? Moving around him. A lot more patient, calculated, definitely, you know, working on a game plan to set up his techniques more. Just, you see the evolution of, of Lomachenko, right? Faints him with a little dip and then jumps in with the left hand. The right hand is a little low, but you know, you'll have that. So he's exposed right there. But he closes the distance, smothers, steps around his opponent and, and tries to get him with the right hand. But you know, if he does this against Rigondiao, he could walk into a left hand, right? However, you see how quickly he closed the distance and the way Rigondiao throws his left hand, it's likely to get smothered or sail right past him, right? But but there's there's gonna be a, a tiny window of opportunity for Rigon Diao to be able to land his left hand, right? You see the window of opportunity, but it's not a very big window. And the same goes for Rigon Diao when he sets off his left hand. It's not a very big window of opportunity either. But the difference, the biggest difference is that Lomachenko's hands are higher up, even though he doesn't do a very good job of protecting himself here from the left. And his chin is tucked, right? And he's closing the distance on you. Rigondeau maintains distance because he is he is closing the distance, but he maintains he needs to maintain space to, to get off his punches. Lomachenko could throw good punches from any distance, right? Or he could just smother you and, and keep throwing punches. But even though a lot of people would call this boxing, this isn't boxing. This is ambush fighting. I'm not saying that there aren't elements of boxing here, but it's about attacking and then counter-attacking, right? Boom, you see that? Fighting. He wants to... 
So he dips to his right, right? There was a tiny window of opportunity for the left hand there, right? Very small window. Let's slow it down. It's there, right? From here, even though he is protecting his chin, you can hit him high on the head, right? From here, and the window has already closed, right? The, win the window is already gone. So, you know, it it's not going to be easy to time this guy. You see a little bit more versatility. He's leading with hooks now too, not just the jab. Feeling things out. Here we go. I think if he does this a lot against Yigun Diao, not to say that he'll be successful hitting him, but he will give himself more of a chance, right? Just step to the left and work the right hand. It's not going to be easy to hit Yigun Diao like that, but he's not going to be getting hit by Yigun Diao either. Now with the big left hand, right? You see how Lomachenko throws his left hand? He has it in the guard and then he just drops it, boom, from the guard. Look at it in slow motion. Dips and then just goes, okay, he's going to back away. Establish distance and just go straight from the guard right down the, the middle right right down the pipe Okay, and he lands it nicely, right? So Rigon Diao tends to do a similar when he throws his left hand as we've been watching um, You know he cocks it back and and he might have more raw hand speed when he does that but the punch is not as fast because it has to travel a longer distance. And ultimately, by the time, you know, Rigon Diao cocks it back and by the time the punch is close to the target, it will have picked up so much momentum through the trajectory of the punch, especially since it's a little bit looping and he puts his whole body into it. You know, it's going to look very fast. But punching actually starts before when people notice it, right? I'm going to try to catch the moment where it, this is where the, I, I missed it by, you know, a split second, but that's where the punch starts, right? At this point in, at the, or at the beginning of Rigon Diao's left hand, what would be happening? Rigon Diao would be dipping and cocking it back, right? So at this point in the punch trajectory for Rigon Diao, his hand would be way behind him still, right? Usually. And then he have to bring it forward. So, Rigon Diao might have faster hand speed. Lomachenko is quicker, right? I hope that makes sense. Boom. But it looked like he got hit also. Because he dropped his right hand a little bit. I'm not sure. No, he didn't get hit, but because he was so quick, he was able to hit his opponent. But, you know, unlike Rigon Diao, the chin is tucked, right? And he brings the right hand back, which is also is taking away the opening from his opponent, right? Because, well, how do you hit him now? You know what I'm saying? But there is a window of opportunity for Rigon Diao's left hand, right? So... You can see how Rigon Diao could win the fight. Could find a way to land his left hand. Slow round. Not a lot happening. Little things. Another thing that he does is... He, because Lomachenko goes to his left and to his right. So here, technically, he could be moving into Rigon Diao's left hand, right? But if Rigon Diao is to hit him in an instance such as this one, 
he's going to have to step back, right? At this point, Ryu Gundia would have to reestablish distance because his left hand isn't short enough to land and, well, he wouldn't be in position. So he'd have to pivot and reestablish the distance, which is why Selimov is not even trying to, to land the left hand because he's not quick enough and he ends up in orthodox stance and he's trying to work the right hand, right? So even if Lomachenko moves to his right, which would seem like he's moving into the left hand, if he's able to pivot and smother a little bit, it's going to be very difficult for Rigondeau to hit him. But, you know, maybe there was an indo a window of opportunity there, but not a very big window. And the problem with countering a fighter is that you better land or what you know and if you, even if you just start throwing against the fighter well he's gonna keep throwing too you know what i mean so fighters be counter punches man anyway you know this is if you wanted to call lomachenka boring this could be one of those fights, right? Where he's just not throwing very many punches. But look, they're they're fighting again and the guy with the shorter arms has the advantage, right? They're fighting on the inside or maybe mid range a little bit. Boom. Let's check out that combination. So, you know, when a fighter like Lomachenko starts opening up like this against Rigondeau, he's open, right, for the left or the right. But the problem is, is that he landed first, right? So if he's able to land, and he, he's likely to be able to land, Rigondeau is going to have to take a split second to, you know, compose himself. And, and be able to, you know, land his own punch. But the problem with that, and even if he doesn't land, Rigondeau is going to have to look to avoid that punch. So he's going to have to avoid that punch and then counter. And as Rigondeau starts to counter, what's going to happen? Well, the left hand is going to be coming at him too, right? So so this is this is why everything else being equal, fighters beat counter punchers because they lead and then they counter. So when they lead, you look to counter, well, they're looking to counter too. You know what I mean? So, but Lomachenko has to be said, opens himself up, even though he is moving his head, right? As part of the technique. It's not like pure head movement. His head is just, is in different position because, well, he's moving his upper body while throwing these punches, right? There he finally brings his left hand up for defense, right? I don't know, maybe he opened himself up a little bit more than he would like to normally because his opponent was just on defense and wasn't really threatening. But, you know, the, obviously Rigondeau is going to have opportunities, He's going, but he's going to have to time them and find that little window of opportunity and not get hit himself in the process, right? But... Selimov, even though he's a world-class amateur and in some ways better than Rigondeau, as far as the left hand goes, it's it's not as good as Rigondeau's, right? And he's more about the right hand. He probes a lot. He throws the right hook. He throws a good jab. Um, so, you know, Lomachenko knows this, especially in the third fight with this guy. So, you know, if, if he's getting caught with the left hand more, it's because he has to look out for the right hand. So Rigondeau is going to have to work his right hand, too, to get Lomachenko stepping into the left. So, you know, Rigondeau can create opportunities for himself, too, if he uses his right hand. Which is not something that he's really known for. Even though he does use it a little bit, he's basically a one-handed fighter. 
A lot of feigning from Lomachenko, right? Closing the distance, dipping this way or that way, but keeping his hands up. You see how short those punches are from Lomachenko? Right? There's no telegraph. There's a feint. Feint, right? Another feint. Gets him out of position, controls him with the left hand, right? With the right hand. And then just goes boom, straight from the guard, right? Quick. Much quicker than Rigon Diao. Maybe the hand speed's not as fast. Maybe it's comparable. But he's quicker. Right? And and just keeps punching. Doesn't stop after one punch like Rigon Diao tends to. And he's far superior mid-range and on the inside against... Selimov. You see how right hand happy Selimov is, right? He's he's trying to set up the right hand to the body or uppercut to the head. He's very, very, very much about the right hand. Unlike Rigondiao, who's very much about the left hand, so if Lomachenko is getting caught with the left, it's because he has he has to watch out for the right, right? You know, if Lomachenko happens to close the distance on Ring on the Out like that, and we've seen, you know, Amagasa be able to close the distance. Everyone he's fought, has been, and if they wanted to, has been able to close the distance on Rigon Diao, right? Without getting knocked out or killed or put in a coma or all that other nonsense. If he's able to get close to Rigon Diao, what's Rigon Diao going to do? What is he going to do besides foul? Well, he's probably going to bend way below the waist right now and look to pivot out of there, which is going to spell trouble for him. Or he'll just, you know, headbutt, hold, hold and hit, low blow, the things that he just does. You see how Selimov is very much about the right hand, right? I think he's a turnaround southpaw. So Lomachenko goes away from the right hand, right? And sets up his, his own right hand. So if, if Rigon Diao could put you know, fear in Lomachenko with his right, that's going to help him land the left. Yeah, inside, Rigon Diao just hasn't shown the kind of skill to be able to compete with Lomachenko. If Lomachenko gets inside, Rigon Diao has never shown us anything. You know, he he was fighting inside a little bit with Cordoba, another southpaw. Was he? No, maybe, I don't remember. I think he was. Um, and that's how he got knocked down, when he started fighting inside against Cordoba, or counter-punching on the inside, right? And that's, that's another problem for a counter-puncher on the inside. Um, your opponent's going to be throwing at least one punch more than you, at least. But, you know, that's just the thing with, with Lomachenko and Rigondeau, which is a big difference. You know, when Lomachenko's in there with a respectable opponent or someone he really has to respect, his hands are up, right? I mean, when he's bouncing around... And Pacquiao does this all the time, right? A lot of fighters do it. When he's when he's out of range, he'll drop his hands a little bit. But then when he gets in range, right, he protects himself. And there he dipped to the left, where he could have gotten caught with the left potentially. But man, his hands were up, and it was it'd be very difficult to catch him there. But Selimov is doing something that Rigon Diao is not going to be doing, right? He's, he's pressuring. He's, he's, he's basically triple G right now, right? 
trying to cut off the ring and and he's probing with with this jab and and looking to put Lomachenko on the ropes and do that whole thing go to the body heavy heavy right hand right and look I know there that this isn't anywhere near the quality of of Rigon Diao left hand but you see how you know you close the distance and a guy with long arms a looping left hand not likely to catch you and even as he closed the distance look how he's hiding his chin behind his shoulder um, the left hand is up and he's probably working the right right Yeah, every time he dips into the left hand, anytime he dips into any punch potentially, he tends to protect himself, right? There he didn't, but that's because he was throwing punches. Very, very awkward, very, very weird, right? He throws the right hand, and then as he's pivoting, he's either controlling his opponent or throwing the... Uh, or he threw the left. I mean, it's just, you know, he just switches stances all the time. And, and it's just so hard to, even describing it, you know, while pausing, it, it's just difficult. Look at how he blocks that punch. Drops his left hand, right, and controls the opponent with the right as he pivots. And then doubles up on the right hand and lands. So just because... Lomachenko is moving into the left of Rigon Diao. You know, the window of opportunity there for a Rigon Diao left hand is very small. I'm going to try to describe it in, in slow motion. Right. Now, if Selimov wasn't threatening him with the right hand, Lomachenko's right hand would have been probably protecting him from the left, right? You see how he's reacting to whatever punch. He's using He's using his right hand, which customarily would be on the right side of his face, to protect the left side of his face, right? He has a very um, active guard, right? So he steps into the left hand potentially, but as he's stepping into the left hand, he's throwing his own left hand, right? So that's a problem. And then, you know, what Rigon Diao would have to do in this instance is avoid the left hand on the way in while pivoting into his own left, or right that is, and stepping back to, to establish distance and then wind up, wind up the left hand. It's going to be very difficult if Lomachenko closes the distance like this. It's going to be very difficult to land a powerful counter left hand on him, right? And if you don't maintain distance or bend below the waist and, and just cower, well, he's going to set up that right hand on you, right? So, and then he'll follow it up because he's a fighter, right? He, he doesn't stop. If the openings are there, he's not waiting for you to counter you. He's not waiting for you to make the first move. He'll follow up his advantage, right? Which is what fighters do. Now... He, as he steps in with the jab, you could land the left hand on him, right? But you have to watch out for the jab. And then you have to watch out for the left hand. If Selimov didn't start playing defense right away in that instance, right? He gets cracked. Pretty good punch. Gets rocked back. If he didn't start playing defense right here, right now, after he got hit with the jab, Lomachenko would have followed with the left. He did follow with the left, but... Selimov, you know, bends below the waist and cowers away and then holds. And look at Lomachenko's control. He's getting he's getting technically much better with these each time. See how he controlled potential headbutt? I'm not saying he was gonna get headbutted on purpose. Whoa, nice punch. But he keeps that hand in front of him as he's closing the distance and then controls him a little bit as Selimov closes the distance.
little counter left hand, nothing great. But you know, fairly quick, not super fast. Rigondeaux starts probing, right, exposing himself. He's going to have to look out for this. And it's not going to be telegraphed, it's going to go straight down the pipe, right? And look, Selimov got the longer arms, right? He's more of a boxer, but he's unable to control distance with, with Lomachenko, right? I'm not saying he's as good as Rigondiao, but who knows? Maybe he's better. Look at that nice defense. It's a quality fighter. Like, I know a lot of his punches are wide and he's looking a little slow sometimes. Look at that defense. Excellent defense. But, you know, it's a, it's a grueling fight. It might not look like it, but it's a pretty grueling fight. And these guys are still amateurs, right? They're not used to going more than four rounds, four two-minute rounds. You know, when Lomachenko gets close to Rigondeau, right, he's going to... He's going to pick a moment, and I know it's a lot easier for him to go to his right here because Selimov's left hand isn't all that great. But, you know, he picks the right moment to dip because his opponent is doing that. So, like, if he picks a moment where Rigon Diaw is probing with his jab or something or, or gets a little bit out of position, he'll be able to close the distance. Just like right there, right? He stepped straight in with a jab. And even though the jab didn't land, he smothered the counter, right? The counter wasn't there. And even if it were there, you know, the shoulder's in the way. And you could hit him high on the head, but not necessarily the chin. It's going to be difficult, man. I think we're going to see a lot of that jab from Lomachenko. Stepping in with that quick jab. And then following it up, using that jab to get inside and following it up. Frenemies. But you know, there's going to be the danger of that too, headbutt. And we know how Rigon Diao likes to set up his headbutt. Uh, Lomachenko's protecting himself, man. He has a very, very responsible defense when he wants to use it. So he's got the glove in the way, but it still looks like they clash heads a little bit. So, you know, Rigon Diao's going to headbutt him. I almost guarantee it, man. He, he's gonna try. So we'll we'll see. The opportunities will be there, right? Because Lomachenko is aggressive, very aggressive, and he likes to close the distance. Look at Lomachenko's defense, man. I mean, he's right in front of you, but. His hands are up. He got cracked with the little counter there. I don't know how clean it was. His arm looked a little bit, the glove looked a little bit in the way, but he got cracked. But his defense is pretty good. There, you know, that's just the thing. When two southpaws throw the left hand against each other, well, they're lined up for each other's left hand. But look at Lomachenko's right hand and look at Selimov's right hand, right? If he starts exchanging with Rigondiao, and this is what Rigondiao tends to do, 
if he starts exchanging left hands with Rigon Diao, don't be surprised if the guy that has more responsible defense does better, right? But they're going to be open for each other's left hand because that's just the nature of the of the beast, two southpaws facing each other. But yeah, Selimov, even though there's some similarities to Rigon Diao, you know, he's I don't think he's a natural right hand, left hander. There. This this is the kind of thing that could potentially spell a lot of trouble for Rigon Diao, right? When he starts bending below the waist like that. Boom. If he comes up and doesn't protect himself, he could get knocked down with the right hook or even the left hand after that. Right? But I'm I'm not saying it's gonna be easy for Lomachenko to hit him. But um if he does that a lot, he's likely to be very safe because he's gonna be moving away from, from the left hand and, and he's just gonna put Rigondiao on defense a lot, right? But it's, you know, Selimov is Lomachenko's size, maybe a little bit bigger. There's a lot of inside fighting going on. You know, it, it's grueling. It's it's difficult. Uh, neither guy's going to look as sharp. You know, if, if it gets to that point with Rigondiao, you have to expect the bigger guy to have the advantage and to be able to dull Rigondiao's tools more so than the other way around because, you know, they start grabbing each other, bumping into one another, um you know, throwing short punches on the inside, they're going to get arm weary, right? A little bit. And their, sh their tools won't be as sharp. Again, you see Lomachenko going into the right and potentially the left hand, right? But he's throwing a jab while he's doing that. His chin is tucked. And you have to play defense and counter, which you could do. But he also steps in. So if Rigondeau wants to throw a really powerful left hand, it's going to sail past him. It's likely to sail past him. And then Lomachenko's just going to keep throwing, right? With pretty responsible defense. There you saw how Rigondeau could set up Lomachenko for the left hand, right? Right? throw a jab maybe a little bit to Lomachenko's um, left side like miss the jab on purpose and then drop the left or use that slapping right hook and drop the left you know but not gonna be easy and he's gonna have to get proactive Rigondeau you know is gonna have to lead jab him and move him into the left but as soon as Lomachenko or Rigondeau starts to throw Lomachenko is going to either throw with him or get out of there or protect himself, right? It's, I, don't, I don't think it's going to be very easy for either guy to hit the other, you know what I mean? But you, you, see, you see the opportunity for Rigondeau, right? Dip into the left hand. But man, where, where is that punch going to land and how is it going to land if he does this, right? Rigondeau could set it off right now, but he won't land cleanly like that. He had like a split second of opportunity because once Lomachenko's right hand is right there, well, it's in the way of the left hand, right? And then he steps in and he's aware of the counter. Not only is he tucking his chin throughout the trajectory of that punch, he's closing the distance and he tucked up just a little bit in case the left hand came, but it didn't. So he abandoned that and just kept throwing, right? And you can expect a lot of this from Rigondeau, right? Because that's what he does. So it's going to be Loma Lomachenko's job to jump on him when Rigondeau gets out of position like this. And just keep following it up. And again, you know, Rigondeau is not this offensive. Rigondeau doesn't press this much. 
So it's going to give Lomachenko, he's going to give Lomachenko a lot more time to, to think, to set up his attacks. And Selimov looks tired now. They both look a little tired, right? They're not used to going. They're, they're six-round fighters, basically. Right, so Rigondiao could get Lomachenko moving into the left hand if he uses his right, like Selimov did right there. And then once he throws the left, well, looks like he cracked him there. But look, he's going to be throwing his left and Lomachenko is going to be throwing his, right? If Lomachenko opens himself up, it's because he's throwing the left too. And Selimov was really quick right there. Even though he doesn't have great hand speed, he's very quick, right? He didn't cock that back at all. He just went straight forward. And it looks like he cracked Lomachenko a little bit, even though Loma is tucked. His chin is tucked, and I, don't, I can't really... It looks like his right hand got pulled down, maybe. You know. Um, no real damage done, and... And he, Selimov has to look out for the left hand from Lomachenko, too, right? Not only that... But unless you really crack Lomachenko very hard, he's going to come back with the right, right? And smother. Man, Selimov is really good defense. Look at that. Boom. Really good defense. But, you know, this is... I don't know how long ago this fight was. Um, doesn't tell me here. But that was that was a long time ago, right? Lomachenko's no longer this guy anymore. We're not going to watch any more of this, but... Well, we're going to wrap it up. How about that? You know, what I wanted to point out in these videos is not only this very interesting story that these two guys have, their history together, but the evolution of the fighter in Vasily Lomachenko and you know I wanted to show him in a fight against a world-class southpaw three different fights and you know bring that up as experience because people and this is another thing of, of, of this bias right that just these bullshit narratives that people don't ideologies basically look when it comes to experience, people just automatically assume that Rigondeau is the more experienced guy. When that's nonsense. Not in the professional ranks or, or semi-pro ranks, right? Fights that went longer than three or four round fights. It's nonsense. Lomachenko has consistently, throughout his... Uh, after they both left the amateurs, has consistently fought much better level of opposition. This is a world-class amateur. This is, this is the only man to ever beat Lomachenko. Right? Up until that point anyway. And in, in the close fight anyway. But so so you know he's quality, right? If he beat Lomachenko. There was a little bit of a Lomachenko going, right? Would it be easy to land the left hand on this guy? Doing that? No, not really. The opening's there, but then he steps around you and away from your left hand. And he could crack you with combinations. Anyway, you know... Here's this other part of this this bullshit narrative you hear about Lomachenko, right? Um, they want to count the World Series of Boxing fights when it's convenient, but when it's inconvenient, because, look, this is experience. <laughs> this is very good experience. When it's inconvenient, they just conveniently ignore it, and they say that Rigondeau is the more experienced fighter, which is nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. Anyway... You know, again, I wanted to show the evolution of Lomachenko as a fighter against world-class opposition, albeit amateur or semi-pro opposition, because there really is very little of Lomachenko against... He only had one fight against a world-class southpaw in the pros, which I hope to get to very soon, and, and continue the evolution of Lomachenko or, or explaining the evolution of Lomachenko. But... Basically, what you saw was a primarily and naturally and instinctually a, a very athletic fighter, first and foremost an athlete, slowly adding 
um, methodology, technique, and strategy to to his game plan, to to his fighting um, style, if you will, and progressing and you know getting better because he bested the guy that beat him twice after that, right? And you saw how he was able to do that by just getting better and, and not really becoming less of an athlete, but picking up technical ability and, again, tactics, which is strategy, and more methodology, more sweet science, adding on to your natural ability and athleticism and becoming a more scientific, technically better fighter. So that's that. Hope you liked the video. See you on the next one.